Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another A Beginner's Guide 2. This time we are looking at Shen Pao, or Chen Pao. I always get it pronounced wrong. It's We'll go with Chen Pao. I'm, I've been told the CH makes a hard K sound, so we'll go with Chen Pao. Yeah, sure, that works. Anyway, welcome to Chen Pao. A lot of people have been asking about this deck list recently because it's been one of my, uh, well, it's been one of the decks that's been one of the most popular decks that have been popping up on my YouTube videos. Um, a lot of people have been into the Chen Pao list. They've been going, hey, what's going on the deck list? I've been copying and pasting, but here it is. So you've all got a reference point. This is Chen Pao. We are starting off with the obvious, the card itself, Chen Pao. Uh, has an ability, which is basically, if you played in our previous format or before rotation, uh, has an ability that is basically Capacious Bucket. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may search your deck for up to two basic water energy cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So important to note, it is active only. I have seen people trying to do it from the bench, much like people used to do with Confei. Um, it's very much an active Pokemon. So, you know, switches are going to be important if you want to get a few of these energies out in one go. Uh, and then Hailblade, it does 60x. You may discard any amount of water energy from your Pokemon. This type does 60 damage for each card you discarded in this way. If you've played Pokemon for a while, you might already know this, but learning your times tables with Pokemon cards is very important. Uh, Hailblade for 60x, you've got God of War that does 30x plus 60. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, having to remember maths, and if you can get, like, these basic ones down, then you can speed up games so much, but that's a completely different subject. So, Shampao, by itself, not a massively powerful card. Um, two basic engines, fine. But if you're manually attaching it, it's whatever. What, what does that matter? That's where, but a but um. Baxcalibur comes in. Baxcalibur has an ability called Super Cold. As often as you'd like during your turn, you may attach a basic water energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So if you're finding two off the Champau and then you're manually attaching one or just putting one more on with Baxcalibur, that's three, you're now doing 180 damage. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's it soon adds up, especially if you've gone first. You're looking at maybe four energy onto a Pokemon, uh, which is hitting for 240 damage. It's a decent amount. It's very good. Baxcalibur, of course, uh, needs evolutions. It is a stage two, so you're starting off with Frigibax. This is the version this deck uses because it has the one retreat cost, which does matter in some matchups. The only issue with this Frigibax is it's a 60 HP Frigibax, which, again, does come up. Uh, anything less than 70 in Sableye is probably taking two of them out if you're trying to set them up late. So there's a couple of different options for Frigibax. You do have, as mentioned, the 60 HP one retreat cost. The other one is 70 HP with two retreat cost. It is a bit of a, you know, player choice on this one. I personally would look at setting up two of the 60 HPs rather than trying to go with one of the 70 HPs, if that makes sense. It's, it's a weird game. We'll get into the tactics of how to play it later. But there's definitely a choice to be made there, and what works for one person might not work for another. So, Chen Pao and Baxcalibur are probably the backbone of this deck. So, what else are we running in here? Well, we'll go through the usual tech options. We've got Manaphy with Wave Veil, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. You're trying to set up these Baxcalibur, so it's important to make sure you're not getting two Frigibax knocked out in one turn before you even get to get them set up, and that does happen. Next up, of course, Radiant Greninja, concealed cards. You must discard an energy from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, you may draw two cards. You do want to try and run through this deck a little bit, um, it's not got a huge amount of search involved, so get using the Gradient Greninja is great. Plus, you've got Moonlight Shuriken, discard two energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, which can be set up in a single turn with the power of Palkia V-Star. Subspace Swell does 60 damage, plus 20 more for each bench Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's. So, if you've both got four benches, this is hitting for 260 damage off two energy. Theoretically, that's two attachments and you're ready to go. You also have the V-Star Power Star Portal. During your turn, you may attach up to three water energy cards from your discard pile to your water Pokemon in any way you like. You can immediately use it to power up Palkia if you need to. You can power up another Chen Pao plus whatever is going on with Baxcalibur or immediately power up Radiant Greninja. It's very good. On top of that, you also have a bit more search in Bidoof and Bibarel. This is probably a little bit more optional than you might think, because as much as the deck doesn't have many search options, the cards that you can use to help supplement this deck kind of maybe remove the need for this card a little bit. I've not tested without it too much, but we'll just talk about it like it's in the deck. It is for my current deck, so. Uh, ability, Industrious, Incisors. Once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have five in your hand. 
it's a nice little, oh, I've got two or three cards left. Let's grab some more. It's a good way to get through the deck. And finally, on your support cards, you have Luminion V. Ability Luminous Sign. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. This deck runs on one particular supporter, which we'll talk about in a second. The nice thing with this card in this deck, though, is it can actually use Aqua Return. 120 damage for one water, two colorless. Shuffle this Pokemon and all attached cards into your deck. If you can get this attack done, even if it doesn't take a knockout, it returns Luminion back into the deck so you can find Luminion again and use it again to find another supporter. It's a fantastic little sequence you can put together. So, on to our item cards now. We'll talk first about our search. So, we have our usual suspects for a deck that wants to get as many basics out as quickly as possible, Battle VIP Pass. You can only use this card during your first turn, search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. In an ideal world, you're hitting two of these, <laughs> so you can get your bench fully loaded. But you definitely need to learn where to prioritize your Pokemon with these. You want Backscalibur set up ASAP. Radiant Greninja is great early game to get some search as well. I think if you're going to choose anything with Battle VIP Pass, you want a Frigibax and a Ready Greninja. If you already have those set up, you can then start looking at other cards. Maybe a second Frigibax just to make sure you can get it set up. Maybe a second Shen Pao. In case the first one gets knocked out, you can bring up the next one, use its ability. Suddenly you've got three energy in hand, evolve with the Batiscalibur. You know, you're off to the races. Uh, as is standard in most decks, Nest Ball, three of. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench, shuffle your deck. Of course, same rules with Battle VIP Pass. You kind of have to learn your priorities of, you know, which Pokemon you would like to pull off that. Ultra Ball, you can use this card only if you discard two other cards from your hand. Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Again, you're using this mostly to look for your evolution Pokemon, but it can be quite clutch to get set up early as well. Sometimes you might need to just use Ultra Ball to get a basic Pokemon to make sure that if your Pokemon gets knocked out in your opponent's first turn, you've got some survivability. You know, it's... Again, learning how to prioritize some of these cards is important. And usually I wouldn't talk about this card just yet as it's a supporter, but we'll go straight to Irida. And we go for Irida because you search your deck for a water Pokemon and an item card, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. What are you primarily looking for in this setup? Well, with Irida, again, water Pokemon can be any water Pokemon and an item card. If you've got Frigibax down, go ahead and look for your Backscalibur. You grab your Backscalibur, you grab yourself a rare candy, choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a stage two card in your hand that evolves from that Pokemon, put that card onto your basic Pokemon to evolve it, skipping the stage one. So you can immediately have a Backscalibur ready to go turn two, which is how this deck has to run. It has a very narrow playstyle, but if it nails it and it sticks, it is very powerful. With all the talk of discarding cards, discarding energy, what are we doing to get it back? The card that we rely on the most for that is Superior Energy Retrieval. You can use this card only if you discard two other cards from your hand. Put up to four basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Going back to Chen Pao, going back to Backscalibur. Suddenly, you've got a turn where you could potentially pull six energy cards into your hand and put them wherever you like with Backscalibur. Now, you could throw them all onto Chen Pao. Six energy is going to be hitting for 360 damage, which is taking out anything in the format. It's a very, very, very good combination if you can pull it off. There is potential for spreading out a little bit as well. Maybe you power up a Luminion to get it back into the deck. Maybe you power up a Palkia to hit up to 260 damage. There are a few ways to apply it, but having six energy attachment in a turn is very, very, very powerful. Like, that cannot be overstated. What other cards do we have in here? Well, we have a few weird ones. Uh, we'll go through the ones that are a bit odd first. First off, Cancelling Cologne. Until the end of your turn, your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities. This includes Pokemon that come into play during that turn. Ideally, you're using that on an opponent's Manaphy, so you can then hit either the Manaphy and something else, or hit two things on the bench to take two prize cards. You want to use this in a way that lets you use Radiant Greninja a bit more. Uh, Lost Vacuum, just a nice card to have. Choose a Pokemon tool attached to any Pokemon or any stadium in play, put it in the Lost Zone. Just a, a, a nice little tech card to have. It's not necessary, but it could definitely be replaced. I'm burying the lead a little bit on, on this. There is a very important card in this setup. Uh, Lost City, whenever a Pokemon, either your or your opponents, is knocked out, put that Pokemon in the Lost Zone instead of the discard pile. Discard all attached cards. This is interesting for two reasons, and you might think offensively it's important, but it's also important defensively. So... 
the Pokemon you are playing generally don't have a lot of HP, especially back, especially your Frigibax, your Radiant Greninja, your Manaphy. If your Pokemon get knocked out with Lost City in play, they go into the Lost Zone, which means they cannot be Echoing Horned back onto the bench for an easy knockout later. That is quite good. That is the defensive use of that card. Lost City is very obvious as well in its offensive capabilities. Uh, if you've got a deck you're playing against which requires a lot of setup, i.e. Gardevoir, if you can start taking out their Curliers early and their Rolts early, then you can start, you know, really damaging their engine and build up a win condition quite quickly where you're depriving them of resources. On top of that, we have Pokestop. Once during each player's turn, that player may discard three cards from the top of their deck. If a player discarded any item cards in this way, they put those item cards into their hand. It's a card that rewards risk. It also punishes risk too. You, if you end up throwing away an Irida or something, you, you won't be happy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But again, we're burying the lead a little bit. The most important card in this version of the deck is Cross Switcher. You must play two Cross Switcher cards at once. This effect works one time for two cards. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. If you do, switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. It's both a switch and a boss's order in one, but technically two cards. It's a very, very, very fun combination. And they aren't hard to hit either. With a combination of Pokestop and Irida in the late game, if you're not looking for rare candies, you are looking for cross switches. I've used this setup very effectively a few times. One of the important skills you will have to learn with cross switcher is make sure if your Pokemon gets knocked out, whatever Pokemon you want to attack with next turn, don't move that up to the active. I've done that a couple of times and then had to play around trying to retreat cross switch back in. It's one of those, it's uh, learning sequencing, which is a very important part of the game, but that's not where we're, we are at this point. Yeah, maybe that's something I cover in a future series. Maybe a beginner's guide to how to actually play the game rather than just deck choice. But anyway, I digress. Uh, final two cards to talk about in this is Boss's Orders, which is obvious. Switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. There's an argument to not include this having Cross Switcher, but it's always nice to have the option to just go, well, I'll take that card and knock it out. And I don't know, each player shuffles their hand, puts it to the bottom of their deck. If either player puts any card on the bottom of their deck in this way, each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. It's obvious how you use this. If your opponent's getting a bit ahead on prize cards, maybe you can slow them down. But the other way is, if you have like a really bad opening hand, quite often you don't want to discard everything you've got in there. Why not use Iono? Put those cards to the bottom of the deck, you can find them later, and then you, you've you got a fresh six cards there, which is close enough to a professor's research without having to waste resources. Very, very good card, Iona. And finally, 10 energy. You'll be trying to search for two almost every turn with Shen Pao. You'll have plenty of discard to bring back with superior energy retrieval. Yeah, it's a fun deck. It's a very fun deck. So you can see what is in this version of the deck right now. We have our main attackers of Shen Pao and Palkia. Radiant Greninja and Luminion are definitely secondary attackers, but can be considered. There are other cards to consider in this deck as well. I haven't had much luck testing this out yet, but Kieran VMAX isn't a bad call either. You can kind of ignore the ability on this one because it's not really one we're going to use too much. Once during your turn, you may discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a water energy card, attach it to one of your Pokemon. It's a nice ability, but it doesn't, it doesn't really work in the way Way this deck is set up realistically you're going for the attack which is three water max frost 120 plus you may discard any amount of water energy from this pokemon this attack does 50 more damage for each card you discarded in this way this card would work maybe in the place of shampoo and i say that because yeah you'll, you'll lose shivery chill but I think it would reward a more discard heavy deck list. So maybe you do go for a Serena or a Professor's Research, get rid of the water energy quickly, then you can Star Portal, uh, Superior Energy Retrieval, the energy back, backscalibre it up. The reason you might pick Kyurem over Chen Pao is the attack. It doesn't sound too different on the surface, but you need to discard two energy to do 120 damage with Chen Pao. Kyurem does 120 damage base, so you don't even need to discard anything for that. To hit 320 damage, you would need to discard 4 energy on Kirim. With Chen Pao, you need to discard 6 energy cards. So, there is a bit of an argument to maybe go for the more bulky Kirim VMAX over the Chen Pao. Granted, you'll probably suffer finding water energy in the opening stage. You would have to adjust the deck list a little bit. But there's definitely an argument to be made for Kirim VMAX. The other card that could be considered is Kyoga from Crown Zenith, not Celebrations. Dynamic Wave put 3 energy... Attaching this Pokemon into your hand. This attack does 180 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It sounds like it wouldn't be great putting energy back into your hand, but bear in mind, if it's going back into your hand, you can back Scalibur it back onto another Pokemon if you need to. You can put it back onto the Kyogre if it survives. 
Uh, 180 damage snipe onto the bench is nothing to be sniffed at. If they've got a Luminion down, that's gone. If they've got a Rotom down, that's gone. There's quite a few Pokemon that that will just one-shot and completely destroy the, the game plan of. If you're going against an opposing Chen Pao, you can just take out their uh, Backscalibur completely. If you're going against God of War, maybe they've retreated a Zacian that's got like 180 health left. Take it out before it can even come back and start doing any more damage. There's quite a few applications to this Kyogre, and... I think it might be another one that could find its way sneaking into these lists at some point. And I don't know that it would need to come at the cost of anything either. Maybe you go down to two Champau. Maybe you go for a 1-1 one, one line of the Bibberol. There's a couple of different options there. So what is your main concern with Chen Pao? Well, the main issue is, of course, the back Scalibur. 160 health is chunky, but it's not a lot. Like, a lot of things will one-shot that in the format. The easiest way to take out this deck is to just boss his orders the back Scalibur. Even if it comes at the cost of like sacrificing one or two Pokemon or two, three prize cards, if you just keep taking out the back Scalibers, especially if you can get Lost City into play, the deck falls apart. Otherwise, there's not too much that's like a major target on this deck. Like you've got good coverage with Manaphy. The Luminion's actually very playable in this deck. Chen Pao for 220. It's a number that isn't the easiest to hit, especially for Pokemon V. I, I think for Arceus, for example, the most damage you'll do with an Arceus turn two is generally 210, but that's with Choice Belt. Choice Belt doesn't hit Chen Pao to begin with, so you're already falling behind by 30 damage. It's just a really awkward number to hit for a lot of a lot of Pokemon. So there's definitely a couple of weaknesses with the deck. Again, consistency is probably a big issue as well. You need, well, it's true of most decks. You do need your turn one, turn two to just go like almost perfectly. But otherwise, yeah, absolutely brilliant deck. Um, I'm a big fan of it. It's probably not quite at the power level that a lot of people would like it to be. But I think much like Maridon, there is a decent base there for someone to either run hot and do really well and go really far into a tournament. Or future cards will make it a better deck. It's one of those that, again, I feel like is a bit gatekept by Sableye. But that's true of any like, non-EX, non-V setup deck at this stage. Like, Sableye is always going to be an absolute bully for you. But yeah, there you go. There is Chen Pao. I will try to remember to link the deck list in the description below. As usual, all my social media links are in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know. Any feedback is appreciated, and I shall see you in the next one. See ya.